sequence of numbers is not as random as you might think. These numbers represent the number of perfect shapes in each dimension. So, what are the criteria for these perfect shapes? In the second dimension, all of the edges of the shape must be the same length and all of the angles must be equal. These are called regular polygons. As I showed in the sequence, there is an infinite number of regular polygons in the second dimension. In the third dimension, each face must be a regular polygon of the same size and shape. Each vertice must be identical, and the shape must be convex. These are called regular polyhedra, or platonic solids. In the third dimension, there are five platonic solids. These are the tetrahedron, cube, octahedron, dodecahedron, and icosahedron. Perfect shapes in dimensions higher than the third require faces with lower dimensional regular polytopes of the same size and shape. These are called regular polytopes. Using the platonic solids in the third dimension, we can deduce what the regular polytopes in the fourth dimension are and what they look like. Starting with the cube, we can fit three cubes around a shared edge. Then, we can use the space left to push it out into the fourth dimension in order to create a corner. The hypercube is made of eight cubical faces. Now it looks like this cube is inside itself, but it is not that way in the fourth dimension. It only looks that way because we are not able to see any dimension higher than our own. Next, we are going to use the tetrahedron. We have to fit three around a shared edge to create a corner. Once we do that multiple times, we create the hypertetrahedron. The hypertetrahedron is made of five tetrahedral faces. We can also put four tetrahedra around a shared edge to create a new corner. This corner, used multiple times, creates a hyperoctahedron made of 16 tetrahedral faces. Five tetrahedra around a shared edge and create the hypericosahedron. This regular polytope is made of 600 tetrahedral faces. We're done using the tetrahedron now. Third, we can use the octahedron. If we put three octahedra around a shared edge to create a corner, we create the 24 cell. The 24 cell is made of 24 octahedral faces. Our last perfect three-dimensional shape we will use is a dodecahedron. If we put three dodecahedra around a shared edge, we can bend it into a fourth-dimensional corner. This corner is very small though, so we will need 120 dodecahedra to make the hyperdodecahedron. These are all six of our regular polytopes in the fourth dimension. Although we cannot use our own intuition to visualize them, we can utilize mathematics to render a three-dimensional representation of them all. I hope my video helped you attempt to understand the fourth dimension in a three-dimensional world through a two-dimensional screen. Thank you for watching.